Well, there are so many different uh, poignant definitions of what it means to dig in. Um, and I think <laughs> when you think about big moments delivering in the clutch, Peter Morozik has a history, world juniors, that still lives on to this day uh, for the Czech Republic. Uh, one of the great world junior performances in that proud, rich tournament's history. Of course, what he did to, uh, from stem to stern, win the series against, at the time, the defending Stanley Cup champion, Washington Capitals, dramatically in double overtime on the road in Game 7. Peter Morozik defines clutch. And uh, for that reason, boy, do we want to figure out what makes him dig in and what has created that from when he was a little kid in the Czech Republic until now, a guy that seems to channel nerves into excellent play, uh, raising his play, and hence digging in. This episode is brought to you by the great people at Allstate Fastener. Allstate Fastener, one of the elite fastener distributors in the world. Any type of nut, bolt, screw, anything under the fastener umbrella, uh, all over the globe, uh, excelling in industries, automotive, heavy uh, truck, tractor, trailer, medical, gaming. I'm just naming a few. Any type of fastener need, they specialize in vendor-managed inventory. Uh, they bring it right to the line. Allstate Fastener. You can find them on their website, allstatefastener.com. And the Vintage Wine Company. Uh, Vintage Wine, wholesale uh, producer uh, in the state of Michigan for all top-end uh, wine, any type of valued wine, just flat out wine knowledge. As I always like to say, the owners of the family-owned company, Mike and Michelle Giorgio, have palates that would be reminiscent of the great wine enthusiast, Robert Parker. The Vintage Wine Company, you can find out more about them at vwcmiformichigan.com. Let's now jump into the great catchy tune from my brother, Tim Tracy, about digging in and then Peter Morazic. Everywhere around the world, the digging in with trade. Young and old, boys and girls, the digging in with trade. Lace them up, it's time to go. The digging in with trade. Lace them up, let's start the show. We're digging in with trade. We're digging in with trip. We're digging in with trip. We're digging in with trip. We're digging in with trip today. Yeah. Well, this is a thrill. Um, not only has this guy become, well, I'll let him speak to it. Uh, it I think we'll be lifelong friends. Uh, Peter Morazic and I, but with regards to digging in, what a clutch performer from the World Juniors with the, the Czech Republic. My gosh, was he great throughout the Washington series and then in game seven in that magical win. Peter, a.k.a. Pietro, as I like to call him, joins us now. And Peter, as I start every episode, thanks for coming on. How do you, how do you, my great friend, define digging in? Thanks for having me, Tripper. It's good to see you too. You know, we're, we can each, we cannot see each other right now. So at least over, over the iPad, uh, to be honest, I haven't, uh, I haven't seen any, uh, any, uh, other guys yet. So I'm going to have to, I have to dig in a little bit into it after, after we are done. Oh, you have to dig. In. Okay. But when you're on the ice from the position of goal, you know, you play such an emotional, entertaining brand. You're such a competitor. How would you define digging into a to a game in the Stanley Cup playoffs? Well, it's all about confidence, I would say. And uh, when you believe in yourself, uh, you know, then uh, you can do it. And uh, I think that's the mentality I have. No doubt about it. Um, I want to I want to ask you first. Uh, you're getting ready to go to the bubble in in Toronto shortly. You were in Raleigh when play got suspended, but then you made a decision to go to Prague. Tell me what you did, you know, because I know you were on the ice with some regularity and how you utilized that time uh, during this 
unique COVID situation? Yeah, it's a, it's a unique situation uh, for everyone. Uh, we stayed we stayed uh, in a rally for a while uh, when when the situation was bad in uh, in Prague. You know, everything was closed there, so uh, we decided to stay here. But uh, you know, Europe uh, Europe opened a lot of things uh, in April, so uh, we decided to go home and uh, you know spend it uh, spend it in Prague. Uh, I was skating with you guys. Uh, that uh, they're playing in um, in NHL, so uh, that was uh, that was uh, I think great decision for for uh, for all of us. And uh, uh, you know, I I, uh, I took my strength coach to Prague, and uh, uh, in the last four or five weeks, uh, you know, we work uh, we work in a gym more than uh, than on the ice because I feel like I need to get uh, you know stronger and and faster and and uh, get things back on track. So uh, you know. That that's all I did uh, and play golf every day. I would say. Yeah, I, I'm gonna hit the, the golf course with you. Hopefully after a cup and you know, like Justin Williams, you want me to give you like five strokes a side. I'm gonna have to negotiate that down. I mean, it's gonna be tough me giving you all those strokes. <laughs> but Pietro, when you say we, you, you talk about your longtime partner uh, Sara. She is in the Czech Republic now. She's a professional volleyball player. I was going to get to this later. Beach volleyball. But... Get, it, get it right, huh? Yeah, you're get right. right. I got it. I'm not sharp today. I need, some, I need some coffee from the Vintage Wine Company, one of our sponsors. Um, Sarah is one of the greats. We're going to get to her later and the great partners that uh, you guys are. But I want to get back to, did you always want to play hockey? Did you play any other sports growing up uh, in Australia? Oh, where my dad played uh, professional soccer, so uh, I used to I used to play a lot of soccer, and we have a we have a small uh, soccer field uh, in a, on a, in a, in my hometown on a, on a garden. So uh, I play soccer and uh, and hockey. Your father Charlie, your mom Lanka Ostrava, uh, which <laughs> makes me think. Once upon a time in the American Hockey League, I room with. A former Hurricane, Merrick Malik, the Sheik. I mean, yep. the real long short of it on those two beds. He was much taller than me. Do you know Merrick? I know him really well. Yeah, he's white. What did, do you remember watching that shootout goal he scored against Olaf Kolzig and that great shootout in, at Madison Square Garden? Yep, I saw it uh, so many times. And uh, it's funny, like uh, a few weeks ago, I actually saw it on TV as well. And, uh, you know, that was, uh, that was a special uh, moment for, uh, for him and, uh, you know, for a uh, hockey world. Boy, for him to pull that off. Okay. So you get, you're playing soccer. Um, at what point, what age did, did hockey become a focus and were you always a goaltender? Or did you try any other position? Well, hockey was always priority. Number one, uh, I would say my, you know, my dad was all, like, uh, had a lot of injuries, uh, when, uh, when he played soccer. He, uh, you know, he almost uh, lost a hand uh, by playing. So, uh, you know, I was I was watching him uh, as a, you know, as a kid uh, playing a lot of soccer, and you know, he had so many injuries that uh, uh, the hockey was always the priority number one. And uh, you know, being goalie, I I think I played since when I was like I don't know, five years old. Being in that. How did your dad almost lose a hand playing soccer? Well, he was uh, he was just in uh, you know going uh, getting the ball and uh, and uh, he fell and the goalie when uh, you know the goalie stopped the ball and uh, just uh, you know uh, step uh, you know in the back days when you when you look at those soccer shoes they had those big spikes so uh, you know the the hand just uh, you know he got everything broken all the ligaments uh, were uh, were off so uh, he spent one year in hospital. He got like 250 stitches on it, seven surgeries. So it was uh, it was a tough uh, tough time for him. Wow, I never knew that. As well as we've gotten to know each other, that's incredible. Well, he, uh, he he always jo- he was joking, uh, you know, when when we were kids and playing hockey, and uh, always kids were asking him what was wrong with his hand. He would be joking that uh, he was he was swimming in Australia, and uh, you know there was a lot of sharks around him. So. So he was always joking about that. That's a good story. That's the type of story that I would definitely go with. You know, you're, you're, last week on Digging In, Jordan Martinuk and I talked about what big hands I've got. Um, yeah, our, that's, that story is for another day. But uh, I wanted you, you and your dad, Charlie. Um, so you're born on February 14th and 82. Dominic 92. Hockey, 
Holy yeah, shit, 80. 92. No, 82. 92. Yeah, hello. Gosh, I'm not sharp. Yeah, you said, you said 82, I think. Not at all. I did say 82. That's not I great. did. I'm wrong. <laughs> I'm, I'm taking ownership. I'm wrong. Okay, so 92. <laughs> well, you look older. You got to start taking care of yourself. But the uh, <laughs> Pietro, so you're six going on seven years old when Dominic Hasek and the Czechs win in Nagano. And yes. isn't it, weren't you watching that? with your dad, Charlie, and that's when you really fell in love with the game and fell in love with, of course, Dominic Asher? I was uh, playing hockey already because I was six years old. I think I uh, I stepped on the ice when I was like four. Uh, we live in a small village with a lot of lakes around it. So uh, most of the winter, you know, every winter we spend it on, on the ice. And uh, I remember that. I watched at uh, home. I didn't go to the, to the kindergarten. I stayed home with them, you know, with, with my dad and uh, watched every game. What was it about, obviously, the Czechs? They beat uh, your head coach, Rob Brindamore, and the Canadians and the shootout in the semis and go on to win. But what was it about Dominic Hasek that, that grabbed you? Uh, I'm sure there were probably many things. Well, it was two things. You know, It was about two players, I would say. It was about Hasek and Jager. So whoever you know wanted to be in a, to play the game, want to be Jager, and whoever wanted to be in net uh, was Hasek. So uh, I decided uh, to, to be the the other way i'm going to tell you a guy that dug in with us several uh, weeks ago pietro the, the greatest coach of all time scotty bowman who coached dominic Hasek to a stanley cup win over carolina in 2002 and he talked i talked to him this morning i said what made dominic great and he talked about his competitiveness but he said trip he was a, he was a risk taker but there was i'm gonna look at his exact quote he said it was always by design not carelessness so I know you, you, you know, players around the league, Dominic Hasek, uh, you know, did a lot of studying besides all of the other things he does. Is that something you do? Like say coming up, you're playing Panarin, Zibanejad, that you know specific things about each guy? Well, if, you know, when you're in the league for a, for a while, uh, you know, a lot of, you know, a lot of players, what, what they like to do. Uh, I like to watch uh, shootouts, you know, how the players, what, what, what the moves are. So. Uh, I, I like those uh, things uh, before a game that uh, that uh, I saw, you know, in a uh, in few years back, or saw them uh, the two three games before, so I can um, I can prepare for them. Have you had a chance through the years to to meet and get to know uh, Dominic Hasek? And if so, uh, can you tell me some stories about that? Must be a thrill. Well, there's there there are a few stories. I, I yeah I, I know him. Uh, last time I saw him was, uh, I don't know, last, last summer. Uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know if I want to uh, like go to it. <laughs> I don't know if I want to say it or. Well, you're digging in. You can tell it. Come on. You can just tell it in the right well, way. No, like it's, you know, I met him and he told me we had a great season in Chicago. I was like, it was in Carolina. You know? <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> you know. You, you have had some great games as a hurricane against Chicago. Uh, so maybe that yeah, guy. But, uh, yeah, no, no, no. He thought I was in Chicago. But that was that was pretty funny. <laughs> well, and he was originally <laughs> a Chicago draft pick too. Um, let's let's move forward. What made you then make the decision? You're playing in the Czech Republic to leave home. That had to be a, a, a tough thing to do to then go and play in the OHL for Iowa. Well, I was I was ready for that move. Uh, I wanted to leave. Uh, you know, that was always my dream uh, to play uh, play junior hockey and uh, try to make to the NHL. So uh, when I was when I was like uh, twelve years old, uh, we were uh, we were in Ottawa. Uh, the, it's called the Bell Canada Cup. I think it's Capital Cup right now. Maybe if if they still have it. And uh, you know, we we skated on the canal when I was a kid in Ottawa and. Uh, you know, everybody was saying, "Look, uh, this this the stadium like uh, it's Ottawa 67s playing their junior team." So I, so uh, so then when I was drafted there, I was I was you know really excited for it, and I was ready to to move on. You had a goalie coach who I was lucky enough to meet uh, when you played Ottawa this season, Tom Dempsey, who is is in, as influential as as any person on your hockey career. He, he coached Mark Andre Fleury at one point. Why was Tom Dens Tom Dempsey, and not why was, but is he so special still to who you've become? 
he's going to be always special to me, in, you know, uh, till the end of my, uh, till end of my career and my life, because uh, he was a big part of uh, of my success in Ottawa, and uh, you know, I will always remember him as uh, as a guy who uh, you know who helped me uh, to the NHL. How did he help you? Well, he was, you know, I, when I came, he didn't speak much English, my much English, and uh, I didn't know what to expect. And you know, he just he just took me. Uh, uh, skate with me every day uh you know we uh we had few lessons always sometimes uh outside of the ring at uh you know just me and him and uh he was uh he was great to me he uh he coached uh you know mark andre flary and uh it's funny because uh you know i'm sure he told you the story when he told you know <laughs> when uh he told me he coached him and he coached mario flary i told him you know what i want to be as as good as him and uh, I'm going to do anything I can to be in an NHL. You know what he also told me uh, in the in the seats uh, where the Senators play? He said, you know, back then, you know, you, you had one set of equipment. It wasn't, you know, new equipment. Because now you're known in the National Hockey League, Peter, for not just being a great goalie, but for having stylish equipment. Um, it, it, well, I didn't said, have any equipment. I didn't have any equipment when I came to Ottawa. Well, yeah, none. So no, because they had to, I had to put, I had to get everything back to the team where I played because they didn't uh, accept it that uh, I'm, I'm going to leave. And uh, you know, when I left, they they kept all the equipment. So I came and I had no equipment, and uh, I used uh, Perugini's equipment. That was my partner in Ottawa. That my first year. Did it fit? Well, he was he was a little smaller, but uh, you know, I I stay with it. I still have the picture, uh, wearing it in a training camp. You know, only thing I had new was my was like brand new skates, and uh, that was it. And helmet, all white. Okay, so I got to ask you, you. You just segued me perfectly. You know the the cool masks that you wear. At that point, you of course you know, you love well, that. You know we should. We're gonna get back to the mask, but I have I didn't end up the story with the auto item. So okay, let go. Me, let me tell. <laughs> You're on. I'm just gonna sit back. No, and then, So I, you know, so I was I was ready to order equipment, right? And uh, there was a there was a Bauer guy that wanted me to, you know, you have to be in Bauer. So the team told, you know, team told me, hey, you have to be in Bauer. That's our sponsors. And I like my dream was always go to Reebok. Like when I was when I was a kid, so I went to the coaches and I was like, you know, with my bad English, I was like, like I would like to get a Reebok. And uh, and uh, Chris, you know, our coach was like, and GM at the time. He was like, are you gonna be better with a Reebok? I was like, yes, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be way better. So they, they I got Reebok. <laughs> you know, so there was a uh, good stuff. Like I, I uh, always remember Ottawa as, uh, as the, you know, the point where I started my career, and uh, that was the best decision in my life to leave. You know, I'd said again, a guy that dug in and a former Hurricane, Kevin Weeks, is so proud of you because he, like you, is a former Ottawa Senator, uh, or sorry, Ottawa 67. 60, oh, you're not, hey, you're not digging, you're not I, digging today. No, I was just testing you. I was testing to see if you no, had your no, no, shovel, no. if you were digging. <laughs> no, no, no. You, you're off a little bit. What's going on? Well, you know, you can't always start every game correctly. It's it's whether or not you can dig your way back. Well, you have into to the be game. consistent. You have to be consistent. <laughs> well, I'm that, trying. That's something that that's something that's for psychologists would tell you. It's great. You know what? Well, maybe I need to get uh, you know a reference from you. The uh, let's get to the helmet, okay? Because you loved Hashi. Yeah. Did you ever consider wearing that vintage uh, the, the bucket no. and uh, cage? I, I, I cannot imagine you doing that. No, there is no way I would wear that. No chance. <laughs> I never, um, big, I never was, I never was a big fan of it. No, yeah, I don't know how you could be. Uh, maybe Archer Zerbe, you know, those two guys. I mean, it's it's definitely unique. Um, so Kevin Weeks, again, in reference to the Ottawa Sixty Sevens, you guys both not only. Hurricanes goaltenders, but former Ottawa 67s, he felt that you really took it to another level, as did the hockey world at the World Juniors in Calgary in Edmonton. What do you remember about that? You were sensational. What it did for your young career? Well, first of all, uh, I shouldn't be on that team uh, because I wasn't allowed for, uh, you know, when I left the, when I left to Ottawa when I was 17 years old, I was... Uh, you know, I was cut from the national team uh, with my from my old team because they are not they weren't um, they didn't accept me to to leave. So uh, you know, the first two seasons I didn't play any World Junior Championship. I always went home for Christmas in my uh, my family, 
And, uh, you know, my third season in Ottawa, I was already uh, ready to go home to check, uh, spend another Christmas with, with my family. And, and uh, you know, they, that was the first time they let me play. So uh, I was really excited for it. And uh, I am thankful for it that uh, I could go because, uh, you know, that was the, that was another step for me in, uh, you know, to end the junior career, how I ended. I don't want you, partner, to let this uh, go to your head. But since the first time I ever saw you play it live, and it was a game you came into Raleigh as a Red Wing, and it was a game as the Red Wings, you had to, the Canes needed to have it to make the playoffs. You were already in, I believe, and you were sensational, not only in stopping the puck, but we won three nothing, right? See, you have a memory like an See, you are digging it. I, I appreciate that. Yeah, you were unbelievable. At least so, someone on this call is well, in the conversations, if, you know. If, if you can't have both, you might as well have one of the two guys digging and actually digging in. Um, yep. what, was, what, was, what were the biggest things you took from your time as a Detroit Red Wing to grow as a National Hockey League goalie? Uh, the, the people around that we had, we had, uh, you know, all the veteran players that I met, uh, they helped me help Thomas Tatar, uh, you know, Gustav Nyquist. They, they help us to, uh, to become, uh, I would say, uh, you know, good teammates, good persons and, uh, and be as a pro every day because, uh, you know, I was with uh, Zetterberg, uh, Lidstrom, Datsyuk. Uh, I could name, you know, uh, like I have so much, so many great memories with, uh, Bertuzzi. Uh, you know, he was, he was awesome guy. And, uh, so they help us. They help us to become uh, what we become. You know, it's just uh, earlier this week, um, Pavel Datsuk celebrated a birthday. Uh, what? What was? What were the little things and the big things about him in particular that made him such a special hockey player? Well, he was special. You know, uh, on the ice, off the ice, uh, he he was like a kid. He he loved to to playing small games uh, after practice and staying with the goalies and doing, uh, you know, breakaways and one-on-one -on -one battles in the corners. Uh, you know, there would be two, three guys in the corner with him who try to take a puck from him and they wouldn't be able to. So that made him special. And if you were to give any advice to, you know, a skater, forward or defenseman, what, what made his game so complete? The fact that he was just as dominating defensively as he was spectacular offensively. Well, he was really smart. He knew where, uh, you know, where where the puck is gonna go. Uh, defensively, he was one of the best players. Like I, I played with, like he was, uh, he did everything on uh, 120 percent. So then you're a free agent. You go to Philadelphia uh, briefly, and you decide to come to Carolina. The, the Hurricanes fans immediately have fallen in love with you. Your teammates would lay down and die for you. To start the Carolina tenure, what made you choose? the hurricanes pietro there was uh you know i think that was the opportunity to uh to come to to get back on uh, on a track and uh, be, become number one guy on, on a team in an hl that uh, that everyone wants so uh, that was the decision i uh you know i had a good conversation with them and uh, i felt that that's the hope that's the that's the chance i i'm gonna get and uh, you know if i uh, if i play well then i could get it you know, we were talking about golf earlier, um, you know, and I always say if, you know, for a guy that's going from being a backup to trying to make that walk to being a number one, it's like going from hitting balls on the driving range to then having to do it for real on the first tee. What would you say are the biggest mental and physical adjustments, improvements you have to make to go from being a, a vintage backup to being a number one in the National Hockey League? Well, the number one thing is uh, be uh, mentally prepared. And uh, I think that's 80%, uh, 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 you know, 80% of it, what uh, what you're going to show on the eyes is, is to be uh, the mental thing. Because uh, I, uh, when I was, when I was young, I didn't, I didn't think I would need that. I, you know, I was like, you know, I know how to play the game, how to stop the puck and the rest uh, I don't need. And uh, right now I, I look at it differently. I'm really happy that uh, I found out when I was still young, and uh, I learned from that. Partner, I, I can't tell you how proud I was of you. Um, entertained, proud, inspired in the in the series you eventually won against Washington. Uh, and I remember, Peter, 
think it was after game two when Brooks Orpik scored in overtime and I called you before or after practice. As I remember as a goalie in overtime, it wasn't the NHL, but I, I was fearful of giving up a soft goal in, in an overtime. And you said, Trip, I'm having my most fun in overtime of a Stanley Cup playoff game. What can you remember thinking about that in overtime, in both overtimes be, before Brock scored? Were you actually really having a ball out there, knowing if you gave up a goal, the season was over? You don't, you don't think about about that at all. Like, you know, if, if something goes through you, the, the season's over. You just you just go you just flow with the situation, and uh, you know with uh, with the Orpic goal, uh, I lost the puck uh, when when he shot it, and uh, you know it uh, it went behind me, and uh, I knew two nothing down in Washington it wasn't over because our fans were awesome in Carolina. I knew they were gonna bring the A game to us, and uh, and they delivered. So uh, you know in the game seven, and anything anything can happen. Two nothing. In what first four minutes in Washington wasn't wasn't the start we ex- we wanted, but uh, we stay with it as a team and uh, we got the rewarded. Well, yeah, I have to ask you that it, it's so tough. You almost have to have played goal to understand it when you're not seeing a lot of action, and then you've got to make an A plus save. In the first overtime, your team was playing great. You had taken over, and then you make a ten beller on Alex Ovechkin from the slot. I think it might have even knocked off your mask. What do you remember about that particular save? Because I think that is so impressive because you hadn't been busy for several minutes. Well, if if you ever make like a big, big save, sometimes it's you have to be lucky as well. And uh, uh, to be honest, I know Ovechkin had a, had a glove side. The short side was was uh, I think was open. If if he would hit it uh, perfectly, uh, you know, probably would go in. But uh, you know that's how it is. Sometimes you have to be lucky, and I was lucky in that uh, situation. I think it was in the uh, end of the second overtime, or yeah, first overtime, right? I think it was yeah. the yeah. I think it was the end of the first overtime, and and then uh, you know we score in the second. See, I think you create your own luck, um, and you know, again, talking to to Kevin Weeks earlier today, he actually spoke about Hashik, and he admired how big his chest always was and his chest position. See, I think about that save. I think you made yourself really vertical to put yourself in position to get hit and create your own luck. Do you agree that that Dominic Hasek's chest was particularly good? And do you take anything from that that you apply to your own game? I I think he read he read the play well, and that's that's something that I'm trying to do because most of the times it's uh, uh, you know you're not gonna stop it if you're not there, and you have to read the play a little bit. So you know you have to you have to think what can happen, what might not happen. And then, uh, you know, when, when you're there, it, uh, it seems like an easy save. Okay, so as you get ready, um, you know, hopefully for a long playoff run and to take the next step from that great run last year, this group, you have some new faces, quite a few actually. Um, but what do you like most about the group? And for the guys that were part of the Eastern Conference final run, what do you like most that gives you belief that you can even go further? Well, I like the you know I like the dressing room, and uh, I think it's ninety uh, percent, eighty to ninety percent, how uh, you know how close we are as a team, and you know I, I always saying everyone can, everyone knows how to play a game, everyone knows how to you know score a goal, make a save, but I think you're gonna you're gonna win when uh, everybody is uh, is on a you know on a page, and when the dressing room is together. I agree with you. Um, and I, it's always amazed me because sometimes goalies beat to their own drum. You don't, you're one of the guys and the guys would run through a wall for you as would hurricanes fans. I, I, I've never, I don't know if I've ever seen a connection between a player and the fans. And certainly, you know, there've been some great goalies in Carolina, great ones, you know, Cam Ward and everything that he achieved, but your connection with the fans, Peter, how much has that meant to you during a game, you know, during a playoff game, say the home wins against Washington. Can you feel the crowd and and you feed off of it? Oh yeah, you you, you know it's going to be different in uh, in Toronto now, but that's what uh, I think most of the players do. They feed from the crowd and they uh, you know when they hear cheering like for us, it's uh, it's you, it gives you so so much energy. And uh, you know our fans in Carolina playoffs were were outstanding. So that's something we have to uh, you know we have to 
like help each other on a bench and in a room and in a hotel that, uh, you know, to get together and, uh, you know, feed from each other. You take that was going to be my exact next question. It's going to be totally different. Like if you're playing against the Rangers and, and at PNC and Madison Square Garden, they're probably stretches of the game where you can't even hear yourself think, let alone talk. Um, how do you adjust perfectly and use now the ability to communicate and hear each other most to your advantage? Well, we're gonna we're gonna see how it's gonna go. We're gonna see, uh, uh, you know, the the game when we play with Washington. Uh, we're gonna test it how uh, how it's gonna be. Uh, I'm sure no one on the team, uh, you know, saw that ever could happen. And uh, you know, it's gonna be really quiet. Uh, we're not gonna be able to. Uh, the fans are not gonna be able to help us. So uh, we have to find a way how uh, how to get prepared for that and uh, and go game by game. Pietro, you're going to be playing in a building. I'm thinking about uh, the hit from Kyle Clifford the last time you were in there. You were playing great. My gosh, you were seeing the puck beautifully. You know, and, and you had come in in relief for James Reimer. I mean, you were rolling. What do you remember about going out? You're a great puck handler as a goalie. About uh, you know the, the split second right before the collision. Well, I would I would do it again. Uh... It's you know I I did to be honest I did even even uh, I saw him uh, when I was coming out and then when you're just focused on the puck you know you don't uh, you don't see him coming but uh, that's that's the game and I'm happy that uh, I recovered from it uh, pretty quick and uh, you know could play a game before uh, the virus hit us. I, I think you're surprising because you're such a good skater. You almost get out there with underrated and covert quickness. That's that's my opinion. Um, I want to ask you about a, a guy that I believe he might even be off camera right now, but uh, a fellow Czech boy already just a, a wonderful hurricane to watch and a super guy, Marty Natchez. You call him Junior. Um, tell us about this guy. And he's and watching how, Entourage. He never saw Entourage before, so he's watching he's Entourage watching right now. Yeah, he never seen that before, so it is a good show. He's he's into it big time. He's digging into Entourage. Oh yeah, every day. I, have you seen it? I have seen it, yes. Yeah, it's solid. Um, I remember it, it, Doug Waite, the former Hurricane, at, uh, it, at one point he brought the guy, uh, what the heck is his name? Whatever the lead character's name is, he brought him. Well, I met, I met, I met Johnny Drama in L.A. That, oh, that, that was my Johnny favorite Drama. guy. Oh, oh that was Johnny. my favorite boy. Oh, yeah. He, he, because Johnny Chris, Chelios, Chris Chelios knows him, so he brought him after a game. He brought him down when we played L.A. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's pretty sweet. What impressed you most about your time with Chris Chelios? I mean, he's legendary. Yeah, he's, uh, he was awesome off the ice on the ice. Uh, I didn't play a game. I didn't play the game with him, but, uh, you know, he was around, uh, when, when I was in Detroit. Okay. So, but getting back to Mr. Entourage right now, Marty Natchez, um, you know, he has phenomenal talent. He is a charismatic guy. He's already, you know, a, a young star in the league. What are the things you're trying to emphasize to him? Because he looks up to you to make sure he he grows in the proper manner. Well, I'm trying to just help him with, uh, you know, all the things that uh, that he can uh, he can do here. Uh, you know, to get an apartment and, uh, you know, like uh, how uh, how to live in in the U.S. Because when I was when I was young and I came to Detroit, guys took care of me as well, right? They took me to their to their apartments and I could stay with them and, and, um, uh, they'll help me to uh, look around. So that's, you know, that's what, that's what we're trying to do. Uh, have him, uh, you know, in, in our house and, uh, you know, he can be around and, uh, we can spend some time together. And you say our house, and again, you're, 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 you're referencing she's overseas right now, but your longtime girlfriend, Sarah, and by the way, I'm pretty darn proud to call her a friend. And she's in her own right. She's a professional beach volleyball player. I screwed that up earlier. Now you're yeah, digging no. in, maybe. Now you're in. Now I'm digging in. Oh, yeah. Welcome, welcome after, what is it, half an hour? Welcome. Yeah, well, you know what? Hey, welcome better, back. Late than, better late than ever. And I've got my, my John Deere uh, earth moving equipment. And now I'm digging in. Um, what, do, you, do you talk a lot uh, to her about uh, the good games, the tough games? Is she a sounding board? How do you both support each other as great athletes that you are? Yeah, I think I think we're talking about uh, you know our performances, uh, you know when I'm playing hockey and when she's playing beach volleyball. I think uh, uh, we we all understand each other. Uh, you know we respect uh, 
what uh, what we're gonna say to each other about the performances and that's that's something that's uh that's uh, special because you know not not everyone uh, uh you know as a couple playing uh, playing professional sports she's a fabulous person how do you meet her we met in in uh, in detroit actually she's Czech, but we met in detroit yeah yeah well you know what i think you both overachieved that's a sign of a great relationship i'm going to i'm going to wait to give you her answer pietro until i ask you well, she told me we didn't need to be on the phone because you were uh, trying to get uh, questions. Yes, so research. she answered them. So why yeah. we are we even talking right now? You because could already. You yeah, should talk called, to her then. But no, it's called research. I, I you know, what I know you well, research, but okay. I got to dig in. You know, that's part of digging in. You got to do the prep. Mm -hmm. um, so I asked her. I'm not going to tell you her answer, but I asked her. <laughs> I said. I said. I said. I said, Sarah. I said, is Peter any different? on a game day in his whole demeanor than he is on a non-game day. What would you say her answer was? Her answer was for sure I'm different. Yes. I know, I, because, because I'm different. But she, she actually thought that you would say that you're no different. So you've already deviated. She, she thought you would say, no, I'm not any different, but <laughs> she said you are. <laughs> I, uh, I think I am because I'm like, I'm come home and uh, you know, I'm going to, take a nap and then uh, you know just wake up and i'm gonna eat and you know i just like uh, thinking about the game a little bit more than uh, on a day off you know if i'm on day off i'm just not thinking about hockey at all see i don't yeah i leave you alone on uh, on game day what the one thing she did tell me and i love this she said no because you really are a caring human being you know i know that sounds a little soft for me as your friend to say that but you really are you have a huge heart and so she says, every time before you leave to go to the game, when you're playing, you always say, baby, don't, for, don't forget to pick up your ticket. Don't forget to pick up your ticket. <laughs> she oh, thinks, that's and, true. And she said, like, yeah, like you're like, she's like trip. Like I'm never going to forget. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, you know, sometimes it's there, I have it uh, in an envelope for her. Sometimes it's home here. So just, just a little reminder. Uh, I love it. Um, I, I'm going to get sentimental, but, uh, with you uh, my mom's actually out getting her hair done right now and my mom grew well, every time we talk every time we talk she's getting her hair done <laughs> yeah <laughs> well every time <laughs> she, to, to bring last everybody time we, last time we talked you said the same thing she's getting her hair done i was actually hoping she'd waltz in with her hair done during uh you know our dig in episode and she might still but what i can tell you is that you know last year you did something for her that I'll never forget because my dad had passed away during the season in November and they had been married since 1971 and they were, you know, the best of friends. I mean, it was a dream marriage and she was having an understandably and an unimaginably difficult time. And all of a sudden she came down and took a picture with you in the parking lot in Raleigh before a game. And then you couldn't lose. Game three. Got, game yeah. three. And we haven't lost. So you brought her in for game seven in Washington. She didn't come to Washington. Until, well, she was at the Washington. She, no, 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 no. She was. We're going to show a picture of it on the uh, on the video portion of our podcast right now. She was not in Washington for games one, two, and five, but then she came for game seven, and yes. you took a phenomenal picture with her before you got on the bus. And I think then she came to New York. She was not going to go to New York, and she came to New York because she was nine and zero at that point, and she did it for you. And I yeah, she it, was she was uh, our charm there, you know. And we we needed that in the game seven. As my friend, as my friend, that meant you, you have no idea what kind of comfort you gave her and um, during a very difficult time. So I ask you, you know, we talked about your dad, Charlie, your mom, Lanka, uh, in Ostrava. What made each of them, we're all lucky if we can say it, the best parents in the world. Yeah, you know, like it's it's always uh, have it to have, you know, it's always great to have great parents and uh, uh, you know, I know without them, I wouldn't be uh, where I am. And uh, I'm really thankful for everything, what they uh, what they have done for me, because how I said, without them, uh, I wouldn't be where I am. If there was any young goalie, uh, Pietro, that um, is looking to grab the moment instead of a moment grabbing him or her, um, what would you say? Because you have been so clutch, and when nerves can sometimes get the, the best of you, you just enjoy it. What advice would you give to a young athlete about dealing with pressure? 
well, just enjoy the game, you know, it, because uh, the game's so so fun that uh, if 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 people are stressed about that, it it will never work out. And and uh, when you enjoy it every moment that you can on the ice, because you never know what can happen in your life. And that's that's just the mentality I have, you know, to go there, have fun, and enjoy every every second because you never know when it's going to end. That's great insight, uh, invaluable advice. Um, I want to talk about the New York Rangers for a second. I'm not asking you to give away trade secrets, partner, but I know you. You watch the league. You know the league. So Mika Zibanejad, he has the puck. What are the things you keep in mind? Well, as a, on a breakaway or just a regular shot? or what, what do you Both. Think? Well, a quick hand. He, he got a long stick. We have to be... Uh, Prepare for that and a uh, great power play player. Artemi Panarin. One of the best players in the league right now. Uh, I think, uh, you know, every team would love to have him and uh, really smart with the puck. Uh, great one-timer on the power play, smartness. He's really, really smart with the puck, uh, where to shoot it and when to shoot it. Chris Kreider. Really, a uh, really good friend of the net. Uh, he can uh, he can find a loose puck. Uh, we have to be uh, prepared for him uh, and uh, be strong in front of the net. If there's one guy on the Rangers that you know that you think has a really good shot that maybe we don't think about, who would it be? Panarin. Panarin. Why is his shot so good? Smart shot. He's not his shot is not that hard, but he know where it goes where it goes, and uh, uh, he's waiting for the goalie to move, and then uh, he can hit it in his puck. Okay, so that, that allows me to move into a couple of, uh, you know, there are some phenomenal, phenomenal Czechos that are, you know, that I've gotten to know well, that are dear friends of yours. And I'm going to start with Tomas Tatar. You mentioned him earlier, your time in Detroit. What makes Tomas uh, have such great charisma? Because I got to tell you, I love the guy. He's enjoying his life. That's all. And, uh, you know, we've become great friends together since uh, we went to Detroit and and uh, you know we're still still in touch, and uh, still when we are by, we went to vacation. So he's uh, he's to me one of the best uh, friends. Where'd you go, Turks and Caicos? Yeah, we we're in Turks and Caicos. He is. Uh, I absolutely think the world <laughs> of him. Okay, moving on. Jacob Voracek. Let's start with what are his greatest. <laughs> oh, this guy oh. is great. This guy is great. Okay, I was going to ask about him on the ice. We know what a star he is. What makes Jacob Voracek one of the most charismatic guys in the National Hockey League? Well, not a, not only in NHL, but uh, you know, as as my friend, uh, he would do uh, you know he would do anything for uh, for his family, for his friend, uh, for his sister's uh, foundation. So um, whatever he says, that's that, that's how it's going to be, and he will never fail in you. So you know that makes him a special and a special player and that's why he's a leader in the dressing room that's why he's uh, you know our captain in the national league and uh, that's national team no league national team but uh, that's that's why he's the leader i i absolutely i love this guy so if if, if special if, guy it's special special Very um, special yeah him and andre pavlik oh oh <laughs> Oh, Pavs. Why is that? Oh. Oh, why Pavs? I agree with you wholeheartedly. Why Pavs? You should, because that's how it is. What? I am agreeing with you. I just said, why Pavs? Oh, why? I haven't, I didn't hear you. Why? Well, because, uh, you know, we're close friends and we know each other. And he's like, uh, like Jake, uh, you know, whatever, uh, whatever he says, it's the, that's how it's going to be. And, uh, he will, he will never do anything bad to you. And, uh, you know, I, I like his uh, decision, you know, how he ended up his career. He said, you know, I am tired of it. I don't want to play hockey. I'm not going to play in another league in NHL. And, and he, he finished it. You know, there's players who would say, you know, I'm tired of the league, but I'm going to play. He says, no, I'm done. So, you know, I like his, this, like what he, what he said. And we play a lot of golf together. Exit stage, right. On your own terms. And, Andre Pavla came this past season to spend some time with you in Raleigh. You did, you played some golf with him. Okay. So, you know, a guy like uh, Jake, you know, and I'm, I'm used to going into the room, you know, Montreal's in town, Tomas, 
or Philly, Jake, and they always say, oh, you know what? I, I went over to Peter and Sarah's house for dinner last night. Is that, is that hard on the ice to, to, with these tremendous friends to separate, you know, the, the friendship to, to focus in on, in, in, in being the better player that night? I don't think it's hard to, uh, to, to, to do it during the game. You don't think about uh, your friendship or that we had a dinner last, last night together. It's, uh, it's all about business and uh, everyone wants to win and uh, they're just focusing on each other. Do, can you tell me, have you had any moments of talking smack or carving each other on the ice, either you and Tomas when Montreal was in town or you were in Montreal or you and Jake when you're playing the Flyers? Oh, me and me and Tomas are always doing uh, great, like, you know, things on the ice and I'm trying to uh, slash him a little bit and he doesn't like it and I can, I can see it, he, you know. He, he hates it. So then he's coming to me and he's going to do the same thing to me. And so with, uh, with Taz, it's, um, it's more than, uh, than usual. What's the best moment that, that you think you really got him? You got in his kitchen on the ice. Well, and, uh, I think in, uh, in a world cup in Toronto, you know, he was, uh, he was on the, on, in, in my crease on his, on his bag. And I just, you know, putting my blocker to his face and he hated so much. <laughs> oh, well, we always talk about that um oh one other guy all right one other guy why well, because i know you're tight with uh with david krejci another what an underrated phenomenal czech player david poster now because i remember i was doing my prep before the conference finals pietro um what makes him such a terrific star player and when he was really a find i think a 25th overall in the 2014 first round did you already know he was going to be special? Yeah, I I, uh, I knew he's going to be a, a great player. Uh, he was there, you know. He was a great player when when he was a kid, growing up, and then he went to Sweden. Uh, he was dominating then they there as well. And uh, what makes him special is, you know, he, he enjoys the game. He plays, uh, you know, street hockey in Czech. Almost every, I would, I'd say every two, every three days, he loves playing. He goes, he's, he's going to go play a goalie sometimes. He's going to go and shoot the puck, you know, and play street hockey every single day if he could. Okay. You're always ripping me about, and you're wrong, but you're always ripping me for my supposed lack of style. You're always I'm not wrong. I'm not wrong. Oh, well, okay. So are you telling me, like, I see what Pasternak wears, Number one, I'd have to go on a juice diet to even fit into it. But are you telling me that's what I should aspire to? That type of style? Are you well, he me? got he got he, he got good style. Why? He got good style. Oh, not like I'm not saying like some things I might not like, but you know, most of the things I, I think he's wearing cool stuff. Like and uh, and then I see you wearing like uh, those uh, huge ties. You know that. They they wouldn't fit on my shirt, you know, the, the really like long ones. Like, come on, you have to, you know, you have to go with the with the age, you know, not with the age, with the 2020 year, you know. Well, I have a huge, I wear a huge shirts and a huge a huge ties because I have a huge chest, Pietro. I don't want to bust out of the shirts. Well, chest or something else. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be calling the game off the monitor in uh, Raleigh. Do you want me to wear the skinny tie that uh, I got and then you yeah, deliver skinny. the good? In the Arizona shutout, yep. You got it. Okay, that's a promise. Um, and, uh, you know, and I'll just agree to disagree well, with you. We might not wear a suit, so if you need, uh, I can borrow you some really nice ties, you know. <laughs> oh, that's a good thought. That's actually good. What are you thinking about wearing? Uh, do you have any idea what you guys are wearing in the bubble yet? No, no idea yet. Um. I want to get back to something uh, about uh, Sarah because she is uh, your partner. She's a she's really knowledgeable and puts a lot of thought into nutrition. What's the what's the biggest nutritional thing or things you've learned as your career has gone on to uh, to to make you more effective, give you more energy, uh, and really drinking drinking <laughs> drinking a celery juice every day, every morning. <laughs> yeah. You said that if I drank that, I'd have a six pack in no time. Hate to break it to you, my brother. You were wrong. Yeah, well, no, I wasn't wrong. It's hard when you when you drink the celery juice and then you have four eggs and you have a sausage and I don't know what else you're eating. You know, omelet maybe in the morning. So it's hard. <laughs> um, then the bar then the barrel is getting bigger and bigger. You know, and then you cannot fit uh, in your shirts. 
<laughs> That's why you're wearing the XL shirts now. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, shifting back into focus here, Peter. What do you like most about? First of all, on the ice, the way Rod wants you to play, what do you like most about your group right now? Working, uh, you know, extremely hard uh, on the ice, uh, do everything right. Uh, you know, everyone who is on the ice uh, knows that, uh, you know, we can uh, we can uh, trust to each other and uh, that everyone's going to, you know, hustle back and do the things right. And And when you, for you, Coming from a Detroit organization, you know, at the tail end of, I know they're in a rebuild now, but at the tail end of all of the excellence, maybe premier excellence in all of sports, aside from the four cups, could have won a bunch more. If I were to say to you, how does Peter Morozik, from a team standpoint, define playing the game the right way, what would you say? What do you mean? Uh, playing it as a group the right way. You know, there's a right oh, way. Oh, okay. That, I, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know how I said before already. Like, I think the win, like the winning means, you know, having the group together, and uh, spend as much time as we want as a group, and not as individuals. So that's going to make the special. Who is in your locker room? Because this you're going to spend so much time together in the bubble, and I hear you've already developed outstanding chemistry, which is really encouraging because you had new faces at the deadline and Brady Shea, we just dug in with Sammy Vodden and Vincent Trocek. Who's the funniest guy in the room? Who wins that title? Good question. We got, I like uh, those good we got, we got uh, a <laughs> pretty good question. Actually, we got the quiet room. I would say most, most of the guys are quiet. Uh, you know, Marty's, uh, Marty's loud. As always, he's always been loud, right? We know that. Uh, he's. Uh, I like uh, you know Zinger. Zinger is uh, is funny. I like his uh, his comments sometimes. Oh, by the Most way, of the times. Hey, by the way, I hear that Zinger has you know has looked really good, and from what I've observed, solid in camp uh, so far. Would you agree with that? And because if he gets hot, uh, you know he could. He's a pure goal scorer. He could. He could really be a factor. Yeah, he, you know, if uh, I think I think uh, you know, if he get a chance and uh, he's gonna feel good about himself uh, that he he used to uh, in the years before when we you know you know we we all know he can score a goal, so I can uh, I can wait to see him and I hope uh, it's, he's gonna have uh, successful playoffs. Do you uh, when you're playing, saying you beat Braden Holtby or before you? Um... You got hurt against the Islanders. My gosh, you were out dueling uh, Robin Leonard. You played super in that series before you got hurt. And Curtis, uh, George Strait, McElhaney took over. Um, do you ever... Who, who took the over? I call Curtis McElhaney. You call, I call him George Strait. You know, the, oh, the great country okay. singer. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> yeah. So, and by the way, in that game too, did you... And Peter, you were playing an elite brand of goal. Was there one moment that you felt that that groin was no good? I knew it. I knew it right away. I knew, I, I could I could felt how uh, you know how how it stretched, and uh, I knew that when I was coming back to a position that uh, it's not it's not going to be uh, good. Hang on, we got to do this and for the people watching on YouTube. Mom, Peter Morozik's on. He said every time that I try, you got to get in here for one quick sec to say hello to him. Oh, she's right back from getting her hair done here. Mom, you got to say hello to P. He was just talking about the great picture before game seven. Just come on. Take, oh, take your time. Come on in here and just come on right in tight. There's Peter. Hey, hello, Peter. Hello, hello. Is How your son nice you? to you? Is, son, yeah. is your son nice to you? Yeah. Absolutely. Right. How are you doing? Right. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Good. That's Live. great. Yeah. Nice to see you. Ah, nice to see you as well. Look? How do you think our hair looks? What's you going to really say? Really good. Well, you should <laughs> go get a haircut now. Tripper. He said I should go get a haircut. <laughs> yeah, I'll push him. Well, please, please, at least someone, you know. <laughs> All right. um, Peter, I, I, I can't thank you enough for digging in. I'm trying to think if I've got anything else for you. You have anything for me other than no. to continue to rip my style? <laughs> no, if I'm going to get something, I will give you a call. You know, you know me. Yeah. Um, what? Uh, two or three last things. What? What are you going to do with your downtime? What do you think you're going to do to keep yourself entertained in the bubble? 
I don't know. That's uh, going to be something new for, for everyone. Uh, so we'll see what things uh, we are allowed, we are not allowed to do. And uh, uh, I think we're going to go uh, day by day, see what, uh, what it's going to bring us. Peter, I tell you what, when it comes to clutch play, there is no guy I'd rather put my money on. I need you to, I need you to dig in. And uh, that team loves you. And to start with the Rangers, my best. get another run. I will do yep. my best. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Thank you so much to the great Peter Morozik for digging in. Always enter. Yep. My Marilyn Tracy says, go. Have Peter. a good day. Yep. Thank you so much, Peter. Thank you. Well, I want to thank uh, Peter Morozik for digging in um, and wish him a, a hot as a firecracker playoff run for the Hurricanes. Uh, I want to thank our sponsors, uh, the great people at Allstate Fastener and the Vintage Wine Company for their continued support. Uh, and I want to encourage everybody um, that either downloads our podcast on Apple, Spotify, other podcast platforms, or that is viewing it on YouTube, I want to encourage you to rate and uh, react uh, honestly to our podcast so we can learn how to grow and continue to give, give you better and better content. Um, our Twitter and Instagram handles are at Dig In Trip. Once again, thank you so much for digging in with Peter Morazic. Great. All right, just do a lead with sponsors, lead to him, however you want to do it. Uh, no wrong way. And a countdown again. Okay. Five, four, three, two, one. Well, there are so many different uh, poignant definitions of what it means to dig in. Um, and I think <laughs> when you think about Big moments, delivering in the clutch. Peter Morozik has a history, world juniors, that still lives on to this day uh, for the Czech Republic. Uh, one of the great world junior performances in that proud, rich tournament's history. Of course, what he did to, uh, from stem to stern, win the series against, at the time, the defending Stanley Cup champion, Washington Capitals, dramatically in double overtime on the road in Game 7. Peter Morozik defines clutch. And uh, for that reason, boy, do we want to figure out what makes him dig in and what has created that from when he was a little kid in the Czech Republic until now, a guy that seems to channel nerves into excellent play, uh, raising his play, and hence digging in. This episode is brought to you by the great people at Allstate Fastener. Allstate Fastener, one of the elite fastener distributors in the world. Any type of Nut, bolt, screw, anything under the fastener umbrella, uh, all over the globe, uh, excelling in industries, automotive, heavy uh, truck, tractor, trailer, medical, gaming. I'm just naming a few. Any type of fastener need, they specialize in vendor-managed inventory. Uh, they bring it right to the line. Allstate Fastener. You can find them on their website, allstatefastener.com. And the Vintage Wine Company. Uh, vintage wine, wholesale uh, producer uh, in the state of Michigan for all top-end uh, wine, any type of valued wine, just flat out wine knowledge. As I always like to say, the owners of the family-owned company, Mike and Michelle Giorgio, have palates that would be reminiscent of the great wine enthusiast, Robert Parker. The Vintage Wine Company, you can find out more about them at vwcmiformichigan.com. Let's now jump into the great catchy tune from my brother, Tim Tracy, about digging in and then Peter Morazzi. We're digging in with Trip today, yeah. Today, yeah. Today, yeah. Today, 